morning, everyone. Good morning. How appropriate we're at Penn State Fayette. You know, you're a classroom of eager learners, so that's a very, very good thing. I'm Ann Nemenick. I'm the executive director of Go Laurel Highlands. And I really want to thank um, our county commissioners, and we have Commissioner Scott Dunn with us. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank also Muriel Nuttall and Kathy and her team for getting the word out from the Fayette Chamber of Commerce for today's workshop. Also, I want to acknowledge two folks that you can chat with at the end. Uh, Warren Hughes and Tammy Stenson are members of the Tourism Grant Review Committee. Wave. I know they want to be hidden, but at the end, you'll, you'll be able to ask pointed questions of them. And members of my Go Laurel Highlands team, Georgia Verbinski, who is your go-to for all things uh, grant-related, and Marissa Roberts, who will also be helping uh, Georgia this year. So thank you all for coming today. Uh, Commissioner, would you like to offer a couple words about this particular grant program and why it's important to travel and tourism in Fayette? So this grant program is kind of unique in that it is funded by tourism and for tourism. So as many of you know, there's a, uh, a hotel tax that is collected every time you uh, rent a hotel room in Fayette County. That money is recycled into this program, into a program that is administered by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so th th this is kind of a unique thing. You know, we're, we're able to actually put money and focus our money uh, to, to make sure that it, it keeps re repeating and recycling and growing at the same time. So I'm glad you guys are all here. This is really important, uh, you know, to make sure that all of our, I see we have townships here and our, some tourism uh, uh, sites here. So th this will be good and, uh, you know, we, we gotta keep our tourism moving. That's one of my, I always tell people I have three buckets and tourism is one of the three buckets. And we have to keep reinventing ourselves from a tourism standpoint. And uh, so all of you are going to be very important to that. Thank you for coming. And thank you. We truly appreciate your support in this endeavor. Um, what's really important is these buckets of money get put back into the county to kind of lift your tourism product and grow your tourism product. So it's really important to think about why uh, and why these particular grants are very important. So uh, bear with me just a moment while I get things started. Okay, why are they available to you? And it's important for you as you begin this process of writing a grant, why you're writing the grant. So the primary purpose, and it really is the intent of the legislation, um, it's to attract visitors here to Fayette County. But they need to be from outside of your county. So keep that in mind. It's to encourage visitors to stay overnight. As Commissioner Dunn said, that's where these funds come from. So the more folks that come, the longer they stay, the more funding we have to be able to grant back into your county. Market the region for both business and leisure. I will say that business travel is down, but leisure travel is booming. So think about your audience when you're writing your grant. Improve or expand your attractions. How do you do that? Well, there's money available for that. And really, at the end of the day, it's to enhance the visitor's overall experience. The last thing that we want them to do is have an experience where they go in an instantaneous world where we can put just about everything out there on our phones to say, oh, I had the worst experience. We want it to be the very best experience that we have. So let's just a moment about the history of the program. And this goes back before my time and back before Commissioner Dunn's time, but an MOU is in place, a memo of understanding between Fayette County as well as the Visitors Bureau to do something with these lodging tax dollars. And that's how the grant program began in 2008. And you can see that over $5 million has been put back into your communities, and there's more to come. So what about success? Today you're gonna to learn about the keys of success. Lesson number one really is your audience. You need to know who your audience is 
not from your local perspective, but from the visitor. Who is coming through your door? Who do you want to market to? And really, who haven't you been market marketing to? That's important too, you know? You may be thinking, oh, it's just a certain sector of the population that really is my golden nugget. Well, I'm gonna show you statistics that show you need to be marketing to a bigger demographic than you might think. So think about who's already coming through your door, but also who you need to market to to get them here. So locals are a part of definitely your audience, your audience, but we want you to remember that these grants are meant to drive overnight visitors. So I'm sorry, folks in Connellsville aren't necessarily gonna drive to Uniontown and spend the night. They might, but folks in Morgantown, West Virginia may very well come. Definitely we know folks from Washington, D.C., Michigan, Detroit, Ohio, all of those outlying states will come. Again, these are tourism grants, so that's important for you to keep in mind. So when you're marketing, you're marketing to different demographics, and you need to reach them in very different ways. At Go Laurel Highlands, our marketing touches just about everything, from billboards to print to social to TV to radio, you name it. So different audiences get their information differently. This is me. I'm a baby boomer. So, yeah, I look at Facebook. Um, YouTube and Pandora are lifestyle uh, mechanisms that we utilize. We realize that um, we like to have others recommend something but we also like paper, so we may actually buy a travel book from Fromers or something of that nature. You can see that the discretionary income is a bit higher, and if you really want to market these folks, they're traveling with a spouse or a partner, and those are the key markets where we feel you can hit them. Pittsburgh, Johnstown, Altoona, Harrisburg, Lancaster, and York. But there are other areas as well. What are their interests? So you as a destination, you as a hotel, you're, you as a vacation rental, look at what they want to do and encourage that in your words of copy. How can they enjoy a film festival? How can they enjoy a wine and food festival? You can see at this particular age group, and no disrespect, Eric, that they might not get in the, um, in the white water uh, at this particular juncture, but they like calm experiences. They like spa treatments and things of that nature. So um, they love nature walks. They might not do pretty extensive hiking at this age group. So now we drop down to Generation X. A little bit less in the discretionary income, but they are traveling with children under the age of 18. What is your message to that age group? You can see where they're living and where are some good places that you could invest some marketing dollars. Now you'll see Pittsburgh and you'll say, well that's pretty close to us. In the tourism grant world, it is still considered out of region. Pittsburgh is definitely a market where you should and could invest your <coughs> tourism dollars. You can see the social platforms that they use and the uh, different tools that they use as far as their travel uses. So Open Table is here, um, Yelp is here as well. Generation X, what are they looking at? So you see that they're really into sports. Uh, they are definitely looking at history. They are visiting our museums. So a little bit and very similar to what you're seeing in the baby boomer market. Now the millennials, you hear a lot about those folks on the news, 26 to 40, they're, they're aging, they're getting a little bit older. They travel with um, adult groups or kind of their pods uh, and their family groups. You can see that their social networking has expanded and includes Snapchat, which might not have been there before. Definitely using streaming services. So, are you on Hulu? Are you utilizing different platforms instead of traditional television stations? Mm -hmm. Definitely a, a new mix here. They want live. They want live concerts. They are definitely looking more at contemporary art. They are adding rafting and skiing. So we're seeing a little bit more mobility when it comes to outdoor recreation for this particular group. 
You have free climbing. You have all winter sports. They're looking at staying at different resorts, but they'll also do camping and camp tent or tent camping and backpacking. Generation Z. This is my daughter. She falls into this particular category. And if she doesn't see it on Snapchat or TikTok, she probably isn't interested at all. So she's like, Mom, Facebook is for you. You know, I'm not really. So again, but she is someone who never hesitates to utilize Airbnb to book her lodging. So again, how are you communicating to each area of the population? <clears throat> it's important. Her target areas and her things, as you can see, are pretty extensive. They'll do and try just about anything in that age group. They don't have the knees like the rest of us might have in this room. So they're eager to try new things. They are adventurists. They are willing to do an experience versus a non-experience. So they want to go and do something. It's not about where they're staying all the time. It's about what they can do and the memories that they can make. Certainly that's the same for all of us, but for this age group, it's all about the experience. So we've lived through the COVID-19 pandemic. We still have remnants of that beside Mark um, sitting on the end with all, all of the tools I think we'll never lose sight of. But something big has changed and it's the window of travel. It can be as short as two weeks when people make a decision, I'm going to go. They're looking at the weather, but they're also checking about the surges and this, that, and the other thing. Media often is not our friend, nor is the weather person, uh, because what the weather is in Pittsburgh is not necessarily the weather in the Laurel Highlands. But what's great about our own social media and our websites and so forth, we can give a different picture and an accurate picture than perhaps what is portrayed on television. So just keep in mind, if you're disappointed when you're looking, and this is horrendous for hoteliers, I live that life, you cannot project. It's so, so difficult to say, okay, two months from now, my occupancy is 60%. Well, guess what? It may or may not be 60% because you may be 100% two weeks out. I mean, we, coming into this year, we didn't know whether Steelers training camp was going to happen in Latrobe. Think about the hoteliers in that pocket who tried to think about the food they needed to serve, the staff, because we just didn't know. And I think we're going to live in a world probably where we're just not going to know. It's going to be conjecture, it's going to be an educated guess, but hopefully, you know, as we continue to move through it, we'll be able to align ourselves to be able to continue to provide the best customer service that we can. So just for a moment, a glance at the visitors, where are they coming from? These are the five, um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Maryland, DC, New York and Virginia are our primary areas where folks are coming from. This slide is a glance, a 12-month glance, from our website analytics. We analyze everything all the time. And yes, that is New York City. It is Washington, D.C. It's Baltimore. It's local Greensburg. But you can see where people are looking Laurel Highlands on our website. We talked about this device. So 72% of people are utilizing this as a tool. Do you have an app? Do you have a website that is able to be viewed intelligently and easily on a mobile device? If you don't, it's something you really need to think of and invest in because people sitting at their desktop is waning and people that use a tablet are almost non-existent. So have your information able to be viewed in a way that works for people that are utilizing their mobile devices. Um, I'm an Apple user. Raise your hand. How many apples do we have in the room? Not as many as I thought. Okay. My husband still lives in the Samsung world, but I just can't get him to move past go. This is important to look at. <clears throat> this is really surprising. And this is um, 
statistical data that we pulled over a year. You can't just pick baby boomers. You can't just pick Generation X. You could, but you're narrowing the people that you need to market to. Those percentages are almost equal across the board of individuals coming to the Laurel Highlands and specifically coming to Fayette County. Keep that in mind because you can't just put an ad on a TV and think you're going to get people through your door. You can't just put something in um, on a social media platform and think, oh, this is going to be golden. This is going to get me what I need. You need to think broad and you need to think across all different types of media platforms. This one surprised us also. We used to skew more female. We are now skewing more male. Searching Laurel Highlands, and when we think about it, we think it's because of outdoor recreation. During the COVID pandemic, everyone was seeking outdoor, and that particular experience really is a little bit more male-based, so this was kind of surprising when we took a look at area analytics over the past 12 months. Next year, it could change, but right now, it's a little heavier on the male demographic. Where to market? We talked a little bit about this. We um, work with a company in Pittsburgh called Red House Communications. We used to market our region as Four Seasons, which is great. We are Four Seasons here, uh, and definitely Four Seasons here in Fayette County but it's the mentality of what people think. And that's what that dotted line is down through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <coughs> people on the western side, which is where we are, so that's your Pittsburgh, that's your Cleveland, your Columbus, look to us for outdoor recreation. They look to us for um, our, our, um, our golf courses, our hiking, our biking, and all of those kind of experiences. People on the eastern side of Pennsylvania, and that would include New York, and that would include Philadelphia, are more arts and culture based when they're thinking about our region. They're thinking about us for the Frank Lloyd Wright homes. They are thinking about us for our museums. They are thinking about us for young George Washington and the importance of what he did here, right here in the footprint of Fayette County so many years ago. So again, it's not just about where you market, but it's the message that you're sharing with those individuals. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much across the board. I think anywhere you go across the US, why do people want to get away? Well, you know, they want to relax, they want to enjoy the outdoors, time with family and friends. That's pretty much not anything that's very, very surprising. So this is us. So if you want to kind of think about how do I mirror or how do I work collaboratively with the efforts of a destination marketing organization like Go Laurel Highlands. These are our four pillars. It is outdoor recreation, it is history and culture, it is classic amusements which would be like your Idlewild Park, it is health and wellness and it is not your, your WVU uh, hospital in Uniontown, it's about connecting with nature how that helps you mentally, how that helps you physically. And we're adding a fifth pillar here, and that is the craft beverage industry. It is booming, and you need to have more <laughs> breweries, distilleries, wonderful wineries, but that is where there is tremendous growth uh, in this region. And for that younger demographic, but it is also the baby boomers that want to enjoy that craft beverage experience. So along with those pillars, you have emotional drivers. What are they? Everything touches us in some way, and I think when we travel, it sticks with us. And I just saw a quote where when you travel, you come back a different person. And I think that's very, very true. Um, the three emotional drivers for here are escape. People want to get away maybe from the concrete jungle that they might live in, in D.C. or in New York, to how lush and green and gorgeous this area really is. And when we turn to fall and those sugar maples start to change, oh my goodness, I mean, it is just spectacular here. So emotion. How are you touching folks emotionally? It's an escape. They want to get away. 
adventure. We talked about that a little bit earlier, but they might want to try something new. It might be just an easy walk. It might just be um, a calm water kayak. How do you make that easy for those folks? If this is not something that you do, make a connection. Make a connection to Jolt Bike so somebody can make um, a really cool new experience. You know, they've ridden a traditional bike, but maybe they want to try an electric bike before they buy a bike. So think about your neighbors. Think about your partners in connecting to people. That's what it's all about. It's not about living in your box and I can do this all by myself. You can, but you're not gonna grow your business unless you make those critical, critical connect connections. We have group uh, here from the boroughs and so forth. You can identify those folks in your community. There is funding available. Let them know that these dollars are available to them starting September the 1st to write a grant. It's easy. You can be our conduit to spread the news about dollars available to enhance your business. And then finally, it's connecting. It's connecting. As much as we'd love to keep our kids close, they want to go away, but they also know where home is. So people go, but they come back. Family is here. Steeler games are here. Tradition is here. So it really is about coming back and making those connections with family and friends. So those are the emotional drivers. So let's um, take a look at a successful grant because that is helpful to you. So in your lovely packet, and this one doesn't happen to be in your county, but that's okay because everybody's writing, okay? So at the very bottom, you have a grant from Stallstown Flax Fetching Festival. This is a festival that is in Westmoreland County. Um, why do we call it successful? <laughs> because it was granted funding, but also because all of their reporting and everything that was needed was included in their original documentation. So I say that to you so you don't get disqualified before you even start. If you have a board of directors and that's something that's asked for in the grant, you need to include that. You also need to include in your grant a copy of your W-9. All of these things are kept extremely confidential. Um, please know that we know things are sensitive, but we also need to know that you are a viable business and you are operating above the law and all of those good things. And the only way that we know that is if you provide the accurate documentation. So again, why do we give this to you? Because it's really nice to see how somebody else did something and how they explained their project, what their mission was, what documents they included, so forth and so on. So we have hundreds and hundreds of these. We did ask permission. Uh, from uh, Marilee to be able to include this in all of our three grant workshops. But again, it just gives you an idea of what is needed. So when you see all of these PDFs, we didn't print everything out. Well, I guess we did print everything out. Yes, so, so sorry. So yes, everything is uploaded. When you go to the website, you'll see that you'll need to include all of these documents and so forth. It's an easy process, it takes a little practice if you're first timers, but again, just a tool to look back on as you're writing your grant. So we want you to know that um, you need to start now. Hopefully you've been thinking about what you want to do. Don't get frustrated. There are answers that are out there, but above all, don't miss the deadlines because when you miss them, you're, you're not eligible. If it lands at our office dis on October the 8th, it does not get processed to the grant committee. So start working and start thinking about things right now. So tourism grants are available in three counties, Westmoreland, Somerset, and Fayette, and that's why you're here today. The types of grants may vary. You're lucky here in Fayette that we have four different types of grants that you're eligible for. 
yes, you can apply in different counties. So the, the best example that I can give is if your product stretches across multiple counties, you're able to apply in different counties. Great Allegheny Passage, a linear trail that crosses from one county to the next to the next is eligible to put in a grant for each of the three counties. Will they receive in all three counties? That depends on that particular committee. Yes, you can partner with others that are outside of your county, but the benefit, and you have to strongly talk about this, is the lodging stays in Fayette County. So why am I saying that? So say for instance, you're a lodging property and you're putting together a Frank Lloyd Wright something something. So you have Falling Water in Kentuck, which are here in Fayette County, but you also have Polymath Park, which is in Westmoreland County. Well, if you want all three of those, that's fine. But the lodging that you're driving is back here to Fayette County. You need to emphasize that in your grant. Okay. <clears throat> so here in Fayette County, what's the process? Go Laurel Highlands, also known as the Laurel Highlands Visitors Bureau, has been designated by the county commissioners to represent the tourism product for this county. We're the big lifters. You might not see us locally, but we're in DC, Columbus, Cleveland. We'll be in New York City next year for a travel show. We're working with Pittsburgh International Airport to uh, drive cyclists from the Boston market. I mean, there are big things that are happening that you might not see right here in your own backyard. But the funds, as Commissioner Dunn said, are collected at the county level. They're held in a special account for tourism grants only. The, the, um, the tourism grants, <coughs> as well as all of the banking, are audited on an annual basis. So we have an auditor that comes in every single year and must audit the reports. So when we say we need you to close out grants, there's a reason for that. Not only are you not eligible in years to come, but it's also showing that we have not closed particular books. And so we will hound you until we get exactly what we need. Happy to say we did have a clean audit this past year. There is a tourism review committee of five, not four, but five. Those individuals read, review, and I'll tell you that Warren has a calculator in his brain that can calculate things to the penny read your grants. As you suggested this morning in an excellent idea, have somebody else read it too before you submit it. Make sure it makes sense, make sure the content is correct, make sure the math <coughs> is accurate. Because the last thing we want to do as a review committee is say, well, they can't even do the math. So are we going to really give them $10,000 if they can't calculate something accurately? So take your time but be very accurate in that. So there are three representatives that are put on the Tourism Grant Committee by the county commissioners. There is a representative from Nemecolin because they are the largest lodging property in the county. That's by order of the MOU. And there's somebody from Go Laurel Highlands, and this year it's me. So there are five of us that will review in November. Um, the committee reads, they, um, if there's something that's not there, we know. We have a list of people that have not completed and closed out their grants. We're sorry, but as soon as we see that, your grant gets put to the side and you're not eligible. Please make sure that you follow and close <coughs> out your grants. Georgia does a wonderful job of emailing, calling, sending snail mail letters. We've even done certified mail in the past. I mean, we should not have to run after you to get this information. So please keep in mind all of the deadlines that we're gonna share with you. So here we go. The grants um, will be available on September the 1st. You'll need to turn them back by October the 7th, but the committee will convene in November. Your grant ceremony will be December the 9th. 
and you get to spend your money starting January the 2nd. So why are we doing these kind of a little earlier and so forth? We want to make sure you have a full 12 months. We know that if you buy from a particular source, perhaps it's iHeartRadio or some other entity, and you're contracted for a 12 month period of time, likely you have a better buy, so to speak, um, in the media world. So we want to make sure that as of January the 2nd, you have those funds and you're able to spend them. So what type of grants do you have here in Fayette County? Four different grants. Visitor centers. So these are visitor centers that are along the Great Allegheny Passage bike trail. So they utilize those funds to pay for um, the staff. And why is that important? Well, it's important because people have questions. I mean, it could be a horrendous rainstorm in um, Boston, and they're trying to get to Connellsville, and they don't know if they can get there from point A to point B. So having somebody there to be able to answer questions is critical. Capital grants, so if you're making improvements at your properties, that is eligible for funding. Marketing, I will say, are those that rise above because it really is about getting people here. Those marketing grants are very strong um, as far as the committee review process. And operational is still in there. Uh, it's $2,500, it's capped. Mm -hmm. At this juncture that we've been doing grants since 2008, you should be standing on your own two legs. But we know sometimes there needs to be a little bit of help, so $2,500 is available. But there are other sources for operations uh, within the county, and if you need that information, I encourage you to reach out to the commissioner's office, to the chamber's office, and they can help you navigate to find funding for operations. Matching funds, because this is the bane of everyone's existence. Why do I need matching funds? Well, it's not our role, it's the Commonwealth's role. So it is a statute in Act 18 that if there are tourism grant funds, there needs to be at least a 25% match. So if you are a nonprofit, your match is 25%. If you are a for-profit, it needs to be a dollar for dollar match. And we'll talk about those matches. It's easier than, than you think, okay? So the match, it can be a cash match. It can, you can simply say, I'm matching dollar for dollar from my own bank account for my particular facility. Yeah. It can be professional services that are donated or donated materials. Now, it's important to think about, um, it, it can be work performed, the dates, the times, not times, but the dates, the invoices, the hours, all of those kind of things need to be noted. A <coughs> discount is not in kind. A discount is not in kind. So just make sure if you're utilizing a professional designer for a website, make sure that they are accurately tracking their hours, their hourly rate, and so forth, so that it is easily identifiable when the grant committee reviews. So new this year, and this really falls to our festivals and our event folks, it used to be $10 for volunteers, it's now $12 an hour, and that can be utilized as a match for our festival events and our, our festivals and our event folks. So what do we do um, at Go Laurel Highlands? So administer of the grant program, disperse the grants at the direction of the grant committee, oversee all of the documentation, uh, respond to your questions during the process, uh, special requests, and we'll We'll cover this, but if there's a change of use, you need to reach back out to the grant administrator, Georgia, in order to get the committee to review that and say yes or no. These are county grants. These are not Laurel Highlands grants. These are not Chamber of Commerce grants. These are Fayette County Tourism grants. You thank your commissioners. You can thank us, that's fine. But these really are your grants within your county. 
So I want to take a moment and have you take a look at the criteria. So it's the first little page that you have. Some of you, this is nothing new, and there really is nothing new in the criteria. It remains the same. But you're getting a first glance at this. This will not be uploaded until September 1st. So thank you for coming today to be able to look at this if you are first time folks writing a grant. So you can see the statement of purpose. It identifies for you if you are a nonprofit and a for-profit organization. Hopefully you know the difference in, in exactly what you are. Um, what identifies as a lodging establishment? If you receive a grant um, and you incur expenses eligible for assistance immediately after the grant notifications. So you're able to kind of plan ahead, so to speak, but you cannot spend the money until January the 2nd. Marketing, a grant, marketing grants can be awarded to nonprofits and for profits. They're awarded on an annual basis. Don't be discouraged if you, for whatever reason, you don't get a grant this year, please apply. And if you have a neighbor who is also a tourism-based business, encourage them to apply as well, okay? So again, there are 21 different things that you need to kind of read down through. But again, you're getting a first glance of this before anyone else does. And then when you look at the grant categories, we talked about the marketing grants, the capital grants, the operational expenses, and it's right there in bullet points of what you can and what you cannot ask for funding for. And we talked about the visitor center. I think one of the things that folks get hung up on is what I can and what I can't really ask for so if you see here in blue, expenses not eligible for grant funding. Just keep that by your computer when you're writing it. Just make sure that these things are not included in your grant. There's a multitude of things that you are eligible to put in the grant, but you know, don't tell us that you need office space rent. Don't tell us that you know, I need stamps from the post office because that's not going to be eligible. You know, look at these things and make sure what you're asking for is eligible. Okay. Um, we talk about the grant application process. You'll be able to go on the county's website, but you'll also be able to go to our website, golaurelhighlands.com slash grants, September the 1st, um, to get all of those wonderful things. The deadlines you can see, October the 7th. Date grant funds must be utilized by December 31st of next year. You have a full 12 month period. One important thing, when is your final report done? Due, it is due March 29th of 2024. Circle that, because again, you don't close that grant, you're not eligible for the next grant cycles, okay? We talked about who serves on that grant review committee. And um, we're going to go over the second half and final reports. So you're going to have copies of that to take a look at. Mm -hmm. So the grant application, you have that as your second document. So again, when you go online, you're going to have boxes to fill in. Just like everything else we do in this world, it's an online process. You'll have a grant for your full legal name. You'll have addresses, contact information. And let me say that that's really important of who that contact person is. You may be the executive director, but you might not necessarily be the person that Georgia needs to contact if there's a question. So make sure phone number, extension, email address for the contact person for the grant is there and it's accurate. You may go through transition. How many of us, my goodness, have gone through transitions over the past two years? Please give us a call. If somebody is gone that used to do this, we need to know that. Um, because believe me, miraculously, these documents seem to disappear when somebody is a change in an office. We don't want you as an organization to be penalized 
because someone else has left a particular position. Call Georgia. New contact person, let her know. You'll see that there are certain characters. My God, do not be long-winded. Keep it short. Keep it succinct. You know, we don't need five pages of your mission statement. Follow the characters. Get it said. Be succinct in what it is. But be accurate. Why are you using these funds? It's not because, oh, I want more visitors. Well, yeah, okay, fine. But what else is it? What is this money going to do to help you improve? So again, you're getting a first-hand look at what those questions are. Be able to kind of take a look at that. Maybe start planning over the next two weeks of what you want to ask for with your grant. Make sure you are pulling the grant for Fayette County. Make sure that you are accurately putting in that this is a capital grant or this is a marketing grant because yes, we do have times when it's not one but the other. So let's take a look at the budget form. It's pretty easy. I know everybody says, oh, it's so difficult. It's, it's really not. Please, trust me. So we've given you a sample of a budget form. Super easy. These, this particular one has four different things that they're going to do. Total cost of the activity. So it's $4,500, but we're only asking for $3,000. Um, table magazine, we want a full 1,000. Facebook, we're gonna take care of some of that, but we're gonna ask for $1,000, and we'd like a partnership with Laurel Highlands at 285. Okay, so your grant amount is 52.85, okay? So you need a dollar for dollar match, 52.85, needs to be noted. So all together, you're looking at $10,570. Part of you, part of the grant, gets you to where you would like to be. So um, on the next page is a nonprofit. So that's a 25% match. So here we have four different categories. The grant amount that's being asked is $55.95. We don't need $55.95 for a nonprofit. We need a 25% match of $1,398.75. So we're trying to make it easy for you to be able to calculate what you need and showing us that there is a match that's being shown. And we do need in that field what that is, correct? Yes, the, you need to identify where that match will be coming from. Is that so, what you meant? So it will be a cash match or it could be an in-kind match and you'll attach another document for that. But again, it should be pretty streamlined. If you have any questions before you turn it in, please call and please ask. Okay. So that is the budget form. Um, the matching portion of the application is something that, again, for festivals and events, it can be volunteers. For cash is cash, we pretty much know what that is. Professional <laughs> services. So again, professional services or someone that is identified as a professional. It can be a contractor, it can be um, someone that is a web designer, it can be a professional photographer that you're having images done for your website. But again, they need to be identified with the hours of service, their professional name, on an invoice, so that we know who they are and it can easily be identified by the grant review committee. You can't say Sister Susan is going to volunteer to um, hang posters for me around all of the flagpoles in Connellsville. That doesn't work. It needs to be a professional service. Again, if you have a question, please call us and please ask, and we'll be happy to identify <coughs> yes, that qualifies, or no, it doesn't. So second half and final grant. So you have a blank copy, and you also have a completed copy, so that you can kind of take a look at what a second half reporting form looks like. 
If you get $9,999, you're going to get a check at the grant ceremony for $9,999. If you get a grant for $10,001, you're going to get a check for $5,000, half of that at the grant ceremony. So you are required to do a second half reporting form in order to get the rest of your money. So it's a very simple form, and the process really is simple if you keep all of your documents together. We've provided a second half reporting completed form for you to take a look at. So again, what do we refer back to? It goes back to that first budget sheet. So keep that handy. Don't lose it. So, you have your budget sheet, and then you will have a very simple form where you're reporting how you spent that first batch of money. You're going to attach, in order, the activity or the invoice that matches that particular form. And it's activity number one activity number two, activity number three. So keep all of those invoices, attach it, and mail it in. We check all of that, we make sure everything is accurate, and your check is issued immediately. So again, just keep everything together. When you get an award, you're gonna get a, a folder. The easiest thing to do is every time that you do something that's related to your grant, just put it in there and keep it, okay? Yes? So, and this is different than in the past because didn't we get everything right up front in the past? It depends on the dollar amount that you receive. Oh, okay. So, if it is anything over 10000 you have to do a second half report. So. so, somebody might say, well, I want all my money. Then you write a grant for $9,999, you know. I, I, it, it, it's the dividing line. It's the dividing line. So, uh, but that's a good question, Donna. Okay, so if you're asking for a grant for um, $5,500, you're gonna get all of that money in one check at the grant ceremony and it's yours to spend over that next 12 months. Okay, just depends. You're getting into the bigger dollars. And the reason being is we don't want you to lose track of the money, but we also don't want you to utilize it in ways that perhaps it wasn't approved by the grant committee. So kind of keeping a checks and balances for the, those larger amounts is important. So you've done your second half. So this applies to everyone. You have to close out your grant. So again, you have a blank copy of what the final report is. And then you also have a copy of a final report. So here's something to think about. And remember, please do not send in every document that you sent for the first half to get that second check. That's not necessary. All you need to do is indicate that that information was sent and here is how we spent the rest of the money. And that's your final report. Again, it's it's easy, it's simple, if you keep everything together. And when you're finished, send it in. Don't wait till March the 23rd or the 30th or whatever it is. Don't stress yourself. If you've done all that by and you've gotten all of your invoices, please send that in so that we have it, we can close it out, you're good, you don't have to worry about it, all is done, all good, okay? But again, this is the final report. If you get two checks, you indicate, already sent in my second half report, this is my final report. But everyone sends in a final report. So Donna, if you received funding and one full check, then the final report needs, needs to be turned, turned back in. I only do one um, sales pitch, and so um, as a destination <laughs> marketing organization, I would be remiss if I didn't say, please take advantage of some of our uh, marketing opportunities. 
Again, on September the 1st, our full menu of opportunities will be available to you. We have big buying power, so many of the things that we do are affordable to you. Um, so please just take a moment to read through our menu of opportunities. If we do produce a destination guide, uh, over 100,000 copies are distributed each year. You can put that in your grant if you wish. We are a uh, partnership-based organization. You get a listing in our destination guide as well as a full web page presence. Because that is marketing, that can be written into your grant. So just think about opportunities that are out there, perhaps through us or through other entities. But again, our menu will be on, available online on September the 1st. I love this picture. Rachel has since retired from us, but this is a true picture <laughs> taken many years ago on the day when all of the grants were due. Um, yeah, she was a little stressed on that day. Uh, but again, October the 7th, please make sure that those grants are turned into us. So I'm going to do a little bit of Q&A uh, for some of the main questions, but there will be five people here that can answer your one-on-one -on -one questions. So Tammy and Warren will be seated out in the hallway so you can sit with them and ask specific questions. Georgia will be at the admissions table where you came in. I'll be right here. And Muriel, where would you like to be? Right there. So there are five people that if you've got a question, please feel free to ask them. We didn't want to hold everybody up because some of the questions are very uh, relevant only to your particular business. But let's take a look here. If I have an open grant from the previous year, can I apply for a current grant? If the deadline has passed for your final report, so keep in mind what that March date was, or you have not received an approved extension, you're not eligible. What do I do if I cannot use all the funds within the required time? How that happens, I have no clue, but no, it does happen, <laughs> it does happen. Two things, you need to contact the grant administrator and discuss your options. Secondly, you can ask for an extension, you can ask that I need to extend this money. And it could be for some unforeseen circumstances. We've had a rash of floods in the area. Well, you know, maybe, I don't know, something got washed away that you needed or something. So you can extend it for a month or two months or three months. You give us that timeline and the committee will decide yes or no. From an extension or be required to return the unused form. So, or, or funds, I'm sorry. So yes, I mean, if you feel, you know, this particular newspaper is no longer available and I really don't feel that there's a good fit for me, I still have $1,000, you will be required to turn that money back in. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to be eligible for the next grant phase. What do I do if I need an extension? You pick up the phone, no. We need everything documented in paper. We don't like verbal conversations unless it's just a question that you're asking. We need documentation, so that's why you need to email Georgia, and then Georgia emails that to me, and I, in turn, email that to the committee. We have a paper trail so that when an auditor looks at our books, they can see that there's been an open line of communication we have received three out of five yeses for an extension. It's all documented and in your file. So that's why we do it by email. What do I do if I need to change a budget item after I received my initial grant? Again, you can ask a question, but when you really need something, you have to email it. It happens, and a newspaper I think is a very good example. Some newspapers are closing or have closed or have gone to three days as opposed to five days or whatever it might be. That entity that you got approved for doesn't exist anymore, but you still want to use those marketing dollars, for instance. That's fine. Put it in writing. I was going to do this, but now I'm going to utilize the funds to do this. Goes to Georgia, to me, to the review committee. A yes or no, we'll let you know, and then you make that adjustment on your budget sheet. What do I need to do to get the second half of my grant money? 
Here's a bullet point slide. We'll make sure you get copies of this. But again, this is what you need to do. No emails, it has to be submitted so that it goes in your file and you need to mail it. I know it seems archaic, but it, it just is the way we need to do it for auditing purposes. Grand Administrator, 113 East Main Street, Ligonier, Pennsylvania. What do I do after I have spent my grant money? So this is to close out the grant so you are eligible for the next grant cycle. <clears throat> Again, if you've gotten two checks, you need a, a, a second half report um, and you need a closing report. So just make sure you've taken care of business, so to speak, uh, and have that back in. No emails, just snail mail it in to us. Where can I find all of the forms? So you'll be able to find the forms here at golaurelhighlands.com slash grants on September the 1st. Muriel, you'll have them available on, on the uh, Fayette Chamber website, and often the, uh, the county will have those available as well. So there'll be three sources for you to be able to download, not download, but to be able to utilize um, those links to fill in your application. So what are no-nos? So there are things that you, you cannot apply and put in your grant. Food, lodging, mileage, transportation costs, the purchase or rental of computers, softwares, projectors, personnel costs, salaries, telephone, postage, <laughs> envelopes, letterhead, talent. So if you're having an event and you want, hmm, I guess, I don't, I can't, well, Kenny Chesney as your, as your lead singer, I don't know. We, we will not, we will not pay for dear Kenny to come to your festival. Even though he would be an enormous draw, we're not going to pay to have him attend. Uh, no reimbursement for dignitary honorarium. So if you have a guest speaker, again, that is not something that can be funded. So keep that in mind. Office space rental, no. Physical construction of a billboard. So why is that in there? Well, some people got into the billboard business a couple years ago and said, oh, I'm gonna erect my own billboard. Well, okay, fine. We're not going to pay for the erection of the billboard, but we would pay for the billboard that you have your image and your advertising on. Gift cards, t-shirts, so things that are for resale, that have your brand, your logo on, not eligible. And sectarian religious purposes also, and that's by order of the Commonwealth. That's not one that, that we have. But there's tons of things that you can be eligible for. We want you to be a happy camper, don't we all? Um, so don't just copy what you did last year, please. You know, improve upon it. That's important. There are a lot of wonderful opportunities out there and just be mindful it is really to extend your stay or to get them to stay here in the first place. This is a lovely picture of a file folder. I encourage you all to purchase one of these and keep it by your desk. Please don't lose things. I mean, just keep yourself organized from the get-go and it makes it so much easier than trying to find things in a file cabinet or something. Just whatever your system of organization is, please implement it from day one. Um, credit card statements. So Georgia, explain this, please, because this is a sticky wicket. So when you put something on a charge card, I will need the credit card statement saying this is what I charged and the amount. Say it was 500. I need a bank statement, credit card statement saying you paid that exact amount. It could be over, but I need to see that you spent that $500 on that credit card and you paid for it. A lot of people are like, well, I gave you my credit card with the charge on it. Anybody can charge. I want to see that you actually paid for that charge. So we'll need two statements statements if it takes that long four statements enough payment for that one expense is what I need. do you understand that you're charging it on your credit card but you have to show in your bank statement that you've paid that credit card payment cancel check appropriate yeah yeah thank you 
which would probably be better because let's say you have a balance on your credit card, how do you target you paid that 500? It doesn't, it doesn't you matter. Show you paid you show you that you paid 500 towards that, and it could be for that expense, you know, but just so you make enough payment to cover, cover that. that expense. Okay. Okay. So hopefully this is not the only grant that you write. There are resources out there. Muriel has <laughs> conducted um, through the chamber grant writing workshops. Um, you're, uh, I think just about every entity, including Penn State Fayhead, has resources for you. Um, my daughter had to take a grant writing workshop in college, and this is the this is the textbook, I guess, that, that they had to purchase. I Googled it, and this is what's available um, on, uh, on Amazon. But again, there's money out there, and there's so much more money that's out there than I think ever before because of federal funding. Look for it. You know, just look for that funding because I know it can be utilized to help your business be sustained, but also to help your business grow in the future. And our final slide before everybody gets to their place so they can uh, ask questions. Again, September the 1st, two weeks. Deadline, 4 o'clock, October 7th. Our office is right there on the diamond in Ligonier. Please reach out to Georgia. Her phone, her email is there. Now's the time to ask questions. If, if you get stuck, and sometimes you will get stuck when you're working through the process, please call. Don't wait until the very last day and say, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. Just ask as you go along. There's a lot of newbies in the room today and that's so encouraging for us because it's great to continue to grant out to our strong, strong performers in Fayette County, but it's also great to see newcomers here. And um, these funds are available. Uh, the money keeps growing year after year, and that's because each and every one of you in this job are doing a great job to market and to target people to come here to Fayette County. You've come a long way in just elevating all of your tour tourism assets here, and we certainly applaud you, but we thank you for coming today. So again, just give Tammy and Warren Tammy and Warren, we you can just place. walk out and get to your positions. That would be great. Muriel has a final uh, thought there. So we have a couple of things that the grant committee is talking through um, the folks up here. And they want to make sure it's, it's clear. October 7th, this is all an online submission process, not in person, correct? That's correct. Some people like to hand deliver things the old school way, but we'll make the five copies for the review committee. But we put, you know, we put that on there in case people just think, oh, I just need to make sure it gets there. I don't trust my computer. So yes. So online submission. Online. Correct. Okay. I want to make sure that's clarified. And the other thing that um, the notes up here that we have is the, the committee, the folks that work to do this, love partnerships in communities. Love, I can't say that enough. Love people working together to build up good grants, whether it's a community, two or three businesses, a couple nonprofits, a mix of all that. Very, very strong on partnership grants. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your time. Um, it's noted. We keep a list of you know who attends these things and who who does it. Not that that's going to make you whoo, rise to the top, but. Um, you've at least made the effort to get the information, and that's critically, critically important. So again, Tammy and Warren will be out in the hall. They're moving right now. Muriel is in the back row with the chamber. Georgia will be out at the admissions table, and I'm here, so if you have specific questions, please see one of us now. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it.